Wireless devices are now everywhere, connecting us, entertaining us, educating us, preserving memories. They've become an almost magical extension of ourselves in a very personal way. The average cell phone lifespan is 18 months. Unfortunately, most of the time when a cell phone reaches the end of its lifespan, it winds up in a junk drawer, or worse, landfills. Many times, consumers keep their old phone as a backup, but these backups only tend to pile up. You know, I've, I've never recycled any of my phones. Um, you know, there was, it, it, it's a thought that, that does cross my mind. They're paid, <laughs> they're mine, I kept them. The population of the Earth is estimated to be seven billion people. And when you consider that 1.6 billion phones were manufactured just this year, it's a very big number. Now take into account that only 10% of those phones are recycled. That's a very small number, and we can do better than that. When you consider the cost of new cell phones, their relatively short lifespan, and the sheer volume of cell phone waste, it soon becomes obvious that recycling is a solution cell phone users need to take very seriously. Fortunately, there's a market for used cell phones and cell phone materials or parts, primarily because some used cell phones can become like new. This is the story of your cell phone's second life. Uh, Sprint and E-Recycling Corp have been working together for three years, and we've really pioneered the space in the United States for wireless device trade-in. And really what that means is carriers like Sprint are really leading the way, where we see almost half of their purchases are associated with some trade-in or recycling. Once we get referrals from customers, then they'll come in already with some familiarity, but for the majority of it, most of our customers are hearing about it for the first time. It has a credit value of $130. Seriously? Absolutely. So I can take that $130 credit and apply it instantly off of the purchase today. Because we're a service and repair location, we will emphasize that parts are always going to go to good use for other people, especially because one portion doesn't seem to be working, another may. And so that always does play into to that. So I think it's always an exciting option. But when we go into detail and tell them that we are trying to go green and we're trying to dispose of batteries and certain electronic parts are put to good use. It makes them feel better. Most people are, are definitely excited about it. This phone has officially started its second life. Where it goes from here depends on a number of factors. So when customers are buying a new phone, a lot of times in their minds their phone's not worth anything anymore because to them it's old. But what's important that's really changing is customers' perceptions. So by trading in their old phones, we can give phones a second life. It's a lot like used cars. When you have a car and you choose to replace it, it doesn't occur to you that you wouldn't trade that in, get money for your old car, and then you'd expect somebody else is going to use that. Well, the same thing's true of your old phone. You can trade it in, you can get money for it, and someone else is going to be able to reuse it. And so we're trying to make it every bit as common for people to trade in their old phones as they would trade in their old cars. Interestingly, one of the best markets for recycled phones is in developing parts of the world. There's a, a very big market in second hand phone. Used mobile phones, yes. I mean. Uh, there's a big market in India, second hand phones. With an infrastructure that's less expensive to establish and maintain, wireless has quickly surpassed landlines resulting in a thriving market for cellular devices in their second lives, as well as a boom for small businesses, such as this one. The walk-in is more than 500 or 600 people in a, in a day. This is just an example of how recycled phones can be used, but the demand for them is growing. So how are recycled phones being made into a product that looks and performs, as well as a new phone? Our goal has been to produce the best quality of certified pre-owned devices available anywhere. Uh, Value Tech was founded in 2004 and the facility itself is 250,000 square feet across all our shifts. We exceed 8,000 employees and we're managing north of 400,000 devices a month. This industry started with the need for devices that were becoming more and more expensive as new to be able to be fixed or repaired for significantly less than a new phone would cost. Value Tech has spent a lot of time and a lot of money developing proprietary technologies and processes that recover the maximum amount of material on the device as possible. 
Can we recover this piece of plastic? Can we recover this LCD? Can we recover this battery door? In addition to that, our partnership with Sprint has kind of led us to an R2 certification, a TL9000 certification. All of these certifications kind of speak to the quality of work that is performed and the controls that are in place to ensure an ongoing quality program. So the importance of recycling and recovery is even more significant today than it was several years ago. And the exciting thing about the opportunity is it's both green in terms of being good for the environment, but it's also a good win for customers in terms of a way to save money. This is what a phone looks like when we receive it. It can be in all kinds of bad conditions, but no matter what the condition is, they need to come out looking like this. This is your before and this is your after. Every device must leave looking like it's brand new. There are many companies involved in the total recycling picture. While some remanufacture recent phones, others salvage what they can from hundreds of thousands of older models. Perhaps surprisingly, this is a very profitable and active industry. One company that continues to thrive and expand globally is Belmont Trading Company. My name is Igor Bogoslavsky. I am the president and founder of Belmont Trading Company. And uh, you're here in our headquarters in Northbrook, Illinois. We started out uh, recovering primarily memory chips. We're now handling cell phones. We typically see cell phones that are anywhere from th two to five years old. After receiving the cell phone, we'll make sure that the data has been completely erased using manufacturer's master reset procedures. After that, we will look at a cell phone to see if it has any reuse potential. If that phone is not functioning or it's too old to be reused, we'll tear it apart using our disassembly process to recover valuable parts that can be used again. When devices and their components no longer have value in wireless operations, they still contain materials, mostly metals, that can be extracted from the phones and reused. This happens at places such as Sippy Metals. Welcome to Sippy Metals. We've been in business since 1905. My name is Len Stack. I have been with Sippy for 30 years, and I am the executive vice president. What we do is we process various types of scrap, whether it be non-ferrous, which is copper, brass, and bronze, zinc, things like that, or precious metal bearing materials. The biggest part of our feed is circuit boards, cell phones, things like that. Uh, the cell phones are particularly good for us. It's, a very, it's, it's actually a little higher in value than circuit boards out of a desktop. Um, there is a decent amount of gold, silver, a little bit of palladium and copper that we recover out of the cell phones and pay back. That metal ultimately will be captured in copper bars and will be sold into the marketplace where it will be reused into plating materials, it will go back into the electronics industry, jewelry, plumbing product. Uh, the large lion in front of the MGM brand is 80,000 pounds of our metal. Our whole focus is to bring material in that has metal value that we can return to the market. By remanufacturing phones and other wireless devices, and by increasingly efficient reclamation of the parts and the materials, companies like Sprint have become leaders in electronics recycling. We focus on the life of a mobile device in a way that's unlike any other company. Today, nine out of every 10 devices we get back go through our phone recycling program and get reused. And our focus is giving phones a second life. Device trade-in programs are great because it's a win for customers. In the past six months, Sprint has put $50 million straight back into their customers' pockets. That's why we have the Sprint Buyback Program, where customers can trade in their eligible phone no matter where they bought it or who they bought it from. The items that are filtered out of that program come to us and we will look at it in terms of finding an alternative market for the product. And if we end up putting a less expensive phone out there, it benefits a consumer that is not able to afford the latest models. The phone can't be remanufactured. We disassemble it and we reclaim the parts and materials. It's good for the environment and it's good for business. We are very proud um, to have worked with the mobile phone industry and to have worked with Sprint to develop greener, healthier, more sustainable mobile phones in the marketplace. This is a differentiator for customers and for Sprint leveraging these many partnerships in order to provide a greater value while being an environmental steward. 
The phenomenon of wireless devices is everywhere and anywhere and likely will be for many years, perhaps for generations to come. If we want to keep disposed wireless devices from becoming a staggering environmental issue, then we have to work together to solve this problem. These magical devices with which we form intimate relationships can indeed have a second and perhaps even third very productive life. Because technology isn't just about making new things, but also about making things new again.